So let's start with this deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran that's been brokered by China. This seems to get into your maximum Xi thesis that you had earlier this year. How, what do you make of it? Well, two big things. Uh, first of all, inconceivable that the Chinese would have been involved, never mind taking a leadership role in a diplomatic deal like this three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Xi Jinping has decided that he really wants to be seen as a global leader slash peacemaker. He's about to go to Moscow. He's about to do a video call with the Ukrainian president. They rolled out that 12 point peace plan right. for Russia and Ukraine. So this is new Xi Jinping, right? On the other hand, Biden, who has done reasonably well with European allies, reasonably well with Asian allies, has been abysmal with Middle Eastern allies, particularly Gulf Arab allies. You'll remember that was the first trip that Trump made as president was to Saudi Arabia right. when he grabbed the orb. Biden fist bumped, didn't go so well with Mohammed bin Salman. And Biden has, I mean, his view of the world is we're fighting a battle between democracies and autocracies. Well, there aren't exactly a lot of democracies in the Middle East. That creates a lot of space so for basically, someone like Xi Jinping. He's recused himself. I'm trying, I'm looking at your um, tweet that you had. Sure, Trump left the oven on, but the house didn't burn down till Joe moved in. So you really take, you think of Joe Biden as the one who has in essence, um, created a more volatile situation for the U.S. It's very funny that you picked on that <laughs> post because that post can be read many ways. The reason I posted it is because so much of what we see online is through a distinctly partisan lens. Sure. And so you have a lot of people out there that if it's not their side, they're just going to make the argument against, and it doesn't matter if the same thing had happened before. And so you could make that argument about the Middle East, in which case, you know, the fact is that Trump had a better relationship, Biden had much worse. You could focus on the Europeans, you could focus on the big banking meltdown, and who's the one that actually made the rules easier right. for these banks. We'll get to Hawaii that. Today. I mean, yeah. no, all yeah. of these things. The point is that we need to respond as a country. And the United States today is not responding as a country. And it's precisely the fact that a lot of leaders around the world aren't sure if they can count on a United States from one administration to the next that makes them a lot more unsure about the nature of American diplomatic leadership. And we're seeing that play out with the Saudis and the Iranians right now. Well, from where you sit, this vilification of China, you know, whether justified or not, we've got, you know, the discussions around TikTok, Huawei, you know, Xi Jinping, what's happening in the region. What, um, if you're a business leader, you know, talking to our audience, should you be worried? I mean, I'm, certainly we've seen Washington be worried, but when you're talking to business leaders who are dealing with supply chain, wondering about trade, trying to figure out where to grow, what to make of what's happening, regardless of, you know, he's in his third term. What's your message? What's your interpretation? And what are you hearing from the private sector around what's going on? Most business leaders don't want a fight between the United States and China. I mean, there are some that are national champions of the United States, the Lockheed equivalents, right? right. For them, it's not such an issue. For those that are betting all in on the Americans and American allies, Increasingly, you'll see some companies like that in the tech sector, for example. Yeah. But broadly speaking, that's not the group. Broadly speaking, what you're seeing is a group of CEOs that are signing on to um, a, a letter that I've recently seen from Hank Greenberg, you know, uh, sort of former, former AIG, former AIG yeah. who is trying to say, hey, it's a letter to Biden and Xi Jinping. It's going to be made public, I think, in the Wall Street Journal saying, please it's the most important relationship. We need you talking. We need you engaging with each other. It's, it's a it's a perfectly anodyne letter. I think most people would support it, but it shows that they're worried. A lot of CEOs are worried. I've seen the Business Council in the United States group of CEOs, mm -hmm. same sort of initiative. So the business community isn't happy about this. Now, the problem is Biden's policy towards China, in theory, is a, a policy that would align very well with the U.S. business community. It's a three-bucket policy. It says there's some areas, the most important relationship in the world, most important geopolitically, economically. Yeah. There are some areas that we will be adversaries. 
There's some where we'll be competitors, but with a fair playing field. And there's some where we'll be friends, where we'll cooperate, mm -hmm. climate change, for example. Here's the problem, is that in the present political environment, everything that Biden is doing that is in the adversarial bucket, he's all in. And all of the stuff that's in the competitive and the cooperative buckets, he in principle wants to do, but he doesn't actually do because it's playing politically harmful, base. playing to his base, playing to politics in a political cycle. So what you end up with, if you could easily imagine that the United States would have a policy of Taiwan, we're gonna be all in in favor of ensuring that the Chinese are not gonna change the status quo. Semiconductors for dual use military purposes, we are absolutely not going to let the mm -hmm. Chinese gain investments in that area. We're gonna be tough on those. Those are adversarial bucket. But with the Trump era tariffs that are not in any way strategically important for US national security, yeah. We're going to take them off and the Chinese are going to take them off and we're both going to grow and the business community would love that. Th that is a policy that makes a lot of sense. In other words, provoke the Chinese when it's important, but do not engage in unnecessary provocation. So you got a balloon that goes over your country. You know it was a mistake that it actually flew there in terms of wind conditions. You don't need to blow it up. Biden wasn't going to blow it up until it became public. And then as soon as it became public, suddenly they cancel the trip. They've got to blow it up. That is a problem.